Open Window Show and Kill Radio. Thanks for your patience. Um, you probably heard some of the sound check there, but what you're not seeing through the speakers is uh, that Angelo brought this ridiculous, like, Tangerine Dream setup. Um, he's got a guitar synthesizer. He's got uh, three giant... It's like an entire wall of knobs and with cables that he spent the last hour plugging in. So uh, he's getting that ready. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start. Okay, please welcome Angelo Metz.
better get the guy a microphone. Let's get him a microphone. How about this? Angelo, grab that one there. There you go. Welcome to the show, Angelo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, reactions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> Man, that was interplanetary. That was like one of those planets they discover that has two suns, you know, that it, that it revolves around. Um, it just totally blows your mind. We would be worrying twice as much with two suns. <laughs> we would have an end of the world in December and another one in September. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that, that's what you're gearing for, December 21st? Can you imagine two shadows following you? <laughs> Crazy God, stuff, yeah. man. Wow, that would really, really, <laughs> really, really be fucking trippy. What do you think, Steve? That would be trippy. <laughs> Two shadows. Or trippy. Would, would the s both suns be out at the same time, or it would revol revolve like the different lighting every week, every monthly cycles? These I, weird interlocking I cycles. I wonder what impact that would have on those people who can see the color of the notes. Right. Who are those? People? I. How do you call those people? There's a name for them. Synesthesia or something. So yeah, I forgot. I yeah. I studied that once, and then like most of everything they taught me, I forgot. <laughs> so you're 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 an educated musician, <laughs> despite the fact that you were playing some of the stuff you were playing was incredibly musical, but mm. the majority of it was was not really all that. They told me not musical. to do that. <laughs> That's what you were taught not to do in music school. <laughs> That's what you do best. <laughs> so you broke the rules. You're, you're a total rebel in that that whole world. Nah. <laughs> so what what is the appeal of the analog? I don't know, man. It's just uh, challenging, I guess. It, the limitation is, uh -huh. you know, it's liberating sometimes. Because I noticed that the, the program before this one, e this evening, a guy had a, a Moog. Uh, which one was it? The it was a Voyage, Voyager. Voyager, yeah. yeah. And um, and then, then the guy's brother was kind of like, oh, he's like that Voyager's kind of out there for me. But then that other stuff is like way out there for someone like that. It, it is. Uh, yeah. It's pretty deep. And uh, no, I saw you like uh, involved. Like you spent like this long amount of time plugging in during the earlier performance <laughs> by Jamie. Um, there was you were like just plugging all this stuff. You would pull out another three or four quarter inch cables and plug those into these different look to me like random like. Yeah, yeah, not too places. random. <laughs> not too random. <laughs> so you, so not it's not random. random. No, I was plugging and praying. So yeah, okay. <laughs> so you were you were going there's, by memory. There is plug and play, and there is plug and pray, <laughs> right. and that's a modular yeah, analog stuff. So that's you know? what you. You're, you're <laughs> so your music is spiritual then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In that way, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so so. Um, I mean, musically, what the, what that what were you playing? I mean, was that like traditional Brazilian music? Was no, it I have no idea what that was, man. You weren't. You, you tell weren't me. Doing free a free sort of. It was just a, f you know, it's just evolved from beginning so to end. So it wasn't. I, I, you didn't do any piece that was composed. No. Or or N something that someone no, else has composed. No, it was just that you one, one large experimental, improvised, completely improvised set. So musically, what were you doing? Because like. At first glance, like I just glanced at you for a second, like I honestly I thought I saw Frank Zappa's face. It just for a I've second. Been, you know, I've later been, when I've he cut his hair. Told, I've been told that. I so used to I've have long hair. Yeah, well there you go. So yeah. uh, he he lives. Yeah, he's on. A, for sure he's a big influence in, in, yeah. in my in my uh growing up as a musician for sure. Is it, who else are your influences? Mostly everything you know it's like i just like i was like a sponge you know? <laughs> right it's just like all the, all the classic stuff all the rock stuff you know then as i got older you know like i got into the brazilian and the jazz and you know and then uh, so you grew up in brazil and i uh, yeah and then uh, i went to school my whole life so they made me l learn about everything you know uh-huh 
So it's good in a way, not so, so good in, in other ways, you know. It's time and dedication, you know. So, but what? Because I know you play like a lot of different stuff. You have gigs where you you play um, more standard um, jazz kind of stuff and and Brazilian music and Argentinian yeah, and all I that try, stuff. Yeah, I try not to have a day job. <laughs> That's great. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's been hard, but uh, you know, I try. I take it you spend a lot of time composing and and recording. No, not really. Not lately. A little bit recording, but mm -hmm. no, no, mu not much composing lately. I, that's something I I've been uh, trying to psych myself uh, to to do. You know, I actually have people in, uh, interested in playing my music, and uh, I'm actually letting them a little a little bit down. I promise I'm doing it. <laughs> One of these days is gonna be ready. <laughs> Angela, so I've got the jazz influence. Would you say what you're doing is more freestyle, like a freestyle, free flow? Yeah, I I try to not uh, play you know by any formula you know I try to free myself from scales and you know traditional chord sequences and you know try to just just experiment man it's you know it's, I, I it's truly it. truly experimental I don't know what what it's gonna sound you know <laughs> I don't know it's I, I I'm just as surprised as you and the sounds coming up, you know, coming out. Well, that's so. a, that's the word. I was surprised just watching you and the motions you were going through. It it, it is uh, but it's pretty intense, you know. You must get you ever get your wires crossed? I mean, really, it's it's, it's a lot of <laughs> <laughs> can, I, don't, can, I don't know. Can you can you ha get something to drone while we do this? interview sure can you right. can just drone it's can you just, just drone uh, we like to have you know something really nice going Is underneath no no i'm not hearing anything yet no oh here we go now it is oh god that sounds great so i'll put that in there a little bit so now some of this some of some of your stuff I would kind of classify as drone because you, you, you really drone, bounced yeah, around yeah, yeah, through yeah. styles Dr for sure you know like drone is like a, it's the glue you know uh -huh. you, you try to glue everything together and then nothing like a good drone you so know like a, like it's the your ground you're stabbing on it yeah and then throw a bunch of stuff on top of it you know it's it, that's very conventional you know, it's like a yeah. bass note and a melody. You know. Well, the yeah, the band that played previously, you had a lot of that going on. Yeah. With the cello and yeah, and then for sure. multiple for guitar for parts. Sure. And, so you know. that that's one thing that the the listener can uh, immediately relate to, even though they don't know why. It's just because it's you know it's your bass note, it's your bottom, and then it's your top. You know, every house right. has a roof. In a floor. <laughs> so, uh, as far as um, where you sit musically, like, where do you see? W w how would you describe your music as, like, idealistically or whatever, or spiritually or whatever? How would you describe it? That's a tricky question, isn't it? I don't know. I don't want to call it anything but music. Mm. Why so you know it's it's music. Wh what are uh, you what are you expressing though? What I mean what I I hope I There was a bunch of things that I expressed there. Anger. Mm -hmm. And uh frust frustration about what? And uh about a lot of things, man. About not not about being here with you guys chilling and making <laughs> good, good music what and about the expressing the good vibes. Well, because see, we, but Steve you is know, gonna go there anyway. Every but day you you have to take some shit, man. There you go. We were gonna ask you the big questions, every right? Go ahead. Fucking day. I'm sure Steve was gonna bring the political aspect into this. Yeah, is, is there pol is, there, is there politics involved or is just emotion? I I sense the emotion. I, I understand the emotion. There is there is. Uh, I think uh, my music's very political. 
uh-huh. and not only my 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 music but my posture you know regarding music and 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 life and and since i'm not a politician that's how i express my political view so if you relate the music i make and and the way i i present myself in a in the music community you you can understand my my politics i i'm mm-hmm. not an anarchist or a communist or a democrat yeah. or and fuck the republicans get <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, that right <laughs> so oh. you know but uh, <laughs> 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 but you uh, i we hope are, i don't agree on anybody <laughs> <laughs> but the republicans <laughs> yeah. well <laughs> the green tea party there you go green tea i don't know um but the way you could sum it up is art is reflection of life, of your life, and life is reflection of your art, and that, I just got that from you. That, that you can see how chaotic my life is. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's beauty and chaos. Though. No, I have to say, when you went up to the the vocal <laughs> microphone, I was expecting some just you just to start crooning or whatever, you know, or singing these beautiful melodies Not tonight, and all man. of a sudden it was like it reminded me of <laughs> early pink floyd experimentations or something or didn't you say you know. experimental i think i heard i think that, that word. word does it's floated around here I sometimes i was going to bring my lab equipment but you know, like <laughs> the tubes and stuff and the <laughs> this is, the, tonight's been the kind of the halloween <laughs> theme hasn't it it's been it's in the, in the dark month of october so uh we had some witchy stuff going on earlier and and now you're mentioning it does sound like we're in the middle of frankenstein's laboratory in here you know <laughs> I, i'm not uh, wearing the headphones so i don't know oh <laughs> it kind of reminds you like there little you feedback go. if i do that so. <laughs> well we like feedback here wait oh no what it, it reminds me of sound of frankenstein i was watching it with, uh, with a friend of mine the other night oh you're kidding that's one of the best one ones it's gotta be <laughs> When, Son of when I was a, when I was a kid, I thought I saw Frankenstein in my grandfather's closet. What? It was a scary. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so you, did you grow, grow up on? That's my question to you. Growing up in a foreign land, did you watch old Hollywood horror movies? Oh yeah, of course, man. Like on TV grew, a lot. We grew up on Hollywood stuff. Uh, steady Diet. Yeah. Okay. Batman so, and ah, Wild all Wild great West stuff. and <laughs> okay. uh, all all the stuff, the cartoons, you know. Uh, Bugs Bunny. And, that sounds uh, like my childhood. You know, Popeye, uh, uh, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then <laughs> and then Black Sabbath and like yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's what stuff, about man. punk and all that stuff like uh, I, I Dead Kennedys much and all in, that stuff. Into punk? No, really, you never no, got into no, that no stuff. No punk. No new wave. No, oh, you missed really? out on I that whole thing. I missed. No, wave. I avoided like the plague. <laughs> Not me. Oh, come on now. There were some good. There were some good bands in that realm when you when you want to start to talk about um joy division or the cure and no, bands like uh, that were great Susie and the banshees and all I that stuff i can appreciate it a little better but now, but nowadays. the stuff that's forced down your neck on on the yeah. mainstream media is terrible i always i always valued uh musicianship too much okay and a lot of these bands didn't have well then, then let me mention to one this band. they don't have good musicianship let me wa- mention you one know, band that so started I, out you as know, a for me it's, I, i'm just anal like that the, well let me mention one band that actually started out from the midwest usa um, started out as a protest band because they all went to the kent state university and they were there p- present when people were getting their you know faces blown off by the uh, national guard during the protests and that's that band called Devo. I wonder what you think of them. Devo. I. I yeah, were you exposed I dug, to them in I your country? I Devo, the, but to be honest, the track they recorded that I liked the most was their version for uh, "I Can Get No Satisfaction." Oh yes, that's the, the greatest Stone Rolling Stones yeah. cover that's ever. That's, <laughs> the, that's the, the best. best. <laughs> that's best. That, that was my favorite Devo shit. No, no, that, that was the best the thing day. they ever did. You know, yeah. so I really dug that shit. Like, no. With that <laughs> weird rhythm, huh? Because okay, what what do you think? Because rhythmically, you're coming from a country that's known Is for that, the rhythm. Like Mark Mothersbaugh. Mark Mothersbaugh yeah, is yeah. the singer. Yeah, uh-huh. my he's my one wife of the main song actually writers. taught his his kids. I think. Oh, you're kidding? Because because yeah. you know now he's a very successful composer I in know, Hollywood. Producer, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. 
he did the music for like uh, all these like animated films now yeah. that are coming out 3D stuff that your kids I probably watch those movies. I was to send him a real <laughs> tape and I never did. <laughs> oh, you better get on Mark, that. If because you're listening, I, I, I'll, I'll send you some stuff. I, you better send it to him because <laughs> that guy knows some talent. Some granting or, and, and, and stuff like that. <laughs> So, <laughs> but but so when you, in your country you were compo- you were exposed to a lot of uh, American uh, culture through rock and roll and uh, yeah, weird yeah. movies. We were, I think we were bigger on the British bands. Oh really? Yeah, more Beatles and Led Zeppelin so what, than Grateful Dead what, and, and uh, oh, okay, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And what Allman about Brothers. Neil Young and all that stuff? Yeah, Neil Young. Neil Young was pretty big for a while. He, he had like. Uh, um, hey, hey, my, my. Yeah, oh yeah. It was a yeah, big hit yeah. down there. That was a, you know, that was a So you can get away with English stuff. lyrics in Brazil. Um, well, we, you didn't part. really listen for the words, just listen uh-huh. to the music, you know? Yeah. So the, to this day, uh, it's something that, you know, I, I grew up listening like that, so I still have a hard time listening to the words. I see. Oh, now we just lost uh, your drone. But um, mm. that drone was really nice. Oh, now it's back. Oh. That's a trip. It's a um, I have to say that that drone is really nice. And self-playing. If, when the drone goes away, you notice. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if I had that device right there that you have, I would just, that's all leave I would do on. all day. Leave it I on. would leave it going all night and all day. You I know? already have a drone in my house. The sound of my two kids. Ah, oh, that's a great. Uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a drone. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good sound. Yeah, it's got to be a good sound. I mean, I'm an uncle, so I <laughs> like the sound. But uh, I'm not a parent, so I don't have to hear the sound all day. Yeah. Being an uncle is fun because you're not a parent. Exactly. Isn't that great? You have all <laughs> yeah. the fun and none of the responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a great thing. So... As See, far as uh, I like your drone because it's better than the drones that they use in the war. Uh, ah, better. there you go. Yeah, you got that one. You gotta bring bring that back to the. My drones will kill just your pace, patience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so no, no. Okay, this is the thing. This is what I'm trying to get at, Angelo. You you'll go like on Thursday night, Friday night. You'll go to the Gaucho Grill. In, in Long Beach and you'll yeah. play like really standard music that's yes. made for kind of bourgeois like crowds yeah, yeah. So instead of having a day job I play boleros or yeah. jazz standards or yeah. whatever you know try to get my hands in mm-hmm. all the gigs that are, are thrown my way you know I don't say no if you have any gigs out there it's I'm the man <laughs> We're always there to plug what you what you yeah. need to do, but yeah. um, what about <laughs> lessons and teaching and all that? I, I try to do that too. You have it's students? A, yeah, I, I have students, uh, not all the time. Mm-hmm. And right now, I have a couple of students, and I, I'm actually looking for more. So, you know, it's a good way to get some income. You know, and not having a boss, but it's not uh, well secure or steady. The obvious question, though, going back to the, the city we live in and the fact that um, you write music. So, I mean, have you ever scored a film? Have you ever thought of that? I I recorded the soundtrack for, for a film once, but I didn't score it, per se. I helped with the producing and arranging mm-hmm. and snuck one of my compositions in there, too. What and movie was it's that? It's a f- movie called May by Lucky McKee and it, it's is a, that that it's horror been, film? it's a horror film I've seen that movie yeah with Jeremy Kisto and uh, Angela Bettis and uh, what's that other chick uh, that's famous now um, that brunette that's all in all the horror funny movies um, holy cow what's her name Horror comedies yeah. from recent years, or yeah, yeah, I, I can in the remember. Scream movies, or what? Yeah, yeah, big, big time movies. Oh, the main um, actress from the Scream movies. I can't think of her name. Yeah, what's her name? The brunette, funny one. She was in that uh, TV show. Yeah, I can't, I can't think of her name. Anybody? No, n- no. Anyway. Yeah, so she was, she was in that that May. That movie was really <laughs> twisted, yeah, psychological. Yeah. It's kind of a thriller. little cult now. People. You know, really? took it in as a little. You know, people. F- I guess must have played a comic or, or whatever. Yeah. They did. Uh, I think they played at um, 
Sundance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they did, they showed it at the midnight session there. But that's been f- many years. Yeah, that was a few but so so it's scoring films do you it's like It's just such a tough business. I would yeah. love to, you know, if I had the opportunity, you know, mm-hmm. I I would love to. But do what if you got to the point where the, the director just wanted like you to try to imitate whatever their um, temporary tracks okay, are? Hey man, yeah. I'm a whore. Show me the no. money. <laughs> okay, so you would <laughs> totally I'll imitate anything, man. You, totally, <laughs> you wouldn't turn that down. You no, wouldn't. man. Why? <laughs> yeah. No. Because to you, you're saying that you'd rather do that than the dreaded day job that you keep yeah. mentioning. Right, I, I, can l- I know totally a lot of musicians that have a nine to five job, and then they get to play some gigs. Yeah, it's it's brutal the nine to five you thing. Know. It's absolutely soul crushing uh, and know, destroying. Sometimes you know, being the musician, the gig whore is, is not that not too easy either. You know, yeah. you have to put up with a lot of shit. You know, playing yeah. playing out there with the egos and yeah, the shitty yeah. music. And I, I think you probably I think you were in on that thread the other day that Sandra Roscoe sent out. About um, the the different jazz musicians. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was that's, an you're article. Quoting that, that, right? that article the gig was, whores. I, I had to share that article that because was it was so good. What was the, what were the different ones? There's the gig whores. Yeah, there's the, the, the snobs or whatever. Yeah, there's the, like the. It was super It was all funny, the different man. types, and it I, nailed it every type cracked, of musician. It like me up the so ones bad. who like don't, don't have very much talent, but they went to a nice school. I yeah. I, I can't I I couldn't relate because I I'm I am a cynic like that too. Yeah. <laughs> Because cause you, you actually go out and play gigs where like they throw some sheet music in front of you yeah. and you just play, right? Yeah, yeah. Got to do that, man. Mm-hmm. You know? It's not that bad, you know? You just have to be in the right frame of mind, you know? Yeah. Just do do your thing and that's it. I'm, I, it's all a learning experience, too. I'm, I'm getting better at it, you know? Maybe when I when I die... I'll be acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like one of the traits of the gig whore. <laughs> They're always working on their chops. <laughs> no, that wasn't in the article at all. I don't think they even yeah. mentioned that. I think that, that the fact that you have to like always try to strive to be better. Yeah, it was funny. That article was funny because I could pick parts of each of the types and make myself out of it. <laughs> Not the good parts. <laughs> so what about, like, zoom out a little bit, and what about just not just being a musician, but just in, in general being an artist in, in this culture, in the 21st century United States? What what? How do you feel? I feel... Uh, I feel um, pressured with the responsibility. Mm-hmm. I think it's a big social responsibility. Because uh, if we don't fucking do it, who's gonna do it? Exactly. No, you, you're right. You are right. Right. Some somebody's gotta do it. If it's gotta be me, too bad. <laughs> I wish it was like you know Mitt Romney's son, who be in the yacht playing my modular. Right. A bukla. Right. Oh God! If you were Mitt <laughs> Romney's son, you would have more than three yeah, stacks yeah. of we modulus. We have a yacht made of modulus. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so... Because you know it, yeah, if you were Mitt Romney's kid with yeah, the trust yeah, fund yeah. and everything, God damn it, you would have the most Can ridiculous synthesizer setup. I would find you a new studio. Sets. Tonight. <laughs> oh, tonight. <yeah. laughs> Kill Radio would be set. <laughs> See, if Kill Radio would just swing a little bit that way and start hanging out with the millionaire heirs we would just have to change the the name to pray radio and p- play mormon music <laughs> <laughs> oh there's only one little catch is what you're trying to say <laughs> <laughs> oh yes <laughs> it doesn't come cheap man <laughs> no there's a price for everything. Steve would be... But would hey, then you can have 20 <laughs> wives, man. Steve, would you be the last one to sell out or the first? I wouldn't sell out. But I'd, I'd be the last one. You'd be the last one to sell out. I you would not sell. want to have $250,000 swimming in your pocket rather than $2. No, I don't. Know, I don't know what I do. I don't even know what I do with two dollars. No, the, the, like. the beautiful, <laughs> the beautiful, the the beautiful <laughs> thing about it is, is that you can sell out and then next uh-huh. day 
that money is yours. You can do whatever you want with it, even and, and good you're, things. So you're trying to say that s selling out does not ru rust or corrupt your soul. That uh, actually, if you think about it properly, you sell out a little bit like Devo and make all these catchy songs, and then I'm you're the subverting the pragmatist. Their, uh, okay. Right? I see what you're saying. I'm sorry, but I'm kind of passionate. I've, I've had some artists that I looked up to who really sold out. I mean, really sold out. You know, El it, 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 then, then, then it's not just selling out; it's like going to the dark side. That's right? something different, right? But I, I, I like know. your theory of like just do it a little bit, get some cash, yeah. and then you know, if somebody have a yacht offered, made out of offered me a pile of money to do a, to do a shitty gig, I would say, yeah, sure. But tomorrow the gig's is over, and I got a pile but, of money. But there's still. so many tragedies in music where, like, like uh, Sid Barrett or something, you know, where like the other guys, they're like they're flying in, in, in Lear jets and with millions, and then this guy is in a mental hospital I, and he's just well, since, since we're in the hypothetical, I, yeah. since we're in the hypothetical, instead of being rich, I would rather have a fair scene for everybody. Okay. Where uh, in a society where being rich didn't mean anything, okay, and people didn't care about materialistic shit, you know, right? That would be a better hypothetical, right? <laughs> Than me well, being okay, so Mitt you're, you're Romney's you're, son <laughs> and buying you a new studio. <laughs> so you, <laughs> but you're you're Angela, you're a parent. You're a parent. So you, you're a parent of of um, young daughters, and I know that um, you probably have already noticed the um, influence of of pop culture and and all that stuff on your children. Oh my God! But uh, you cannot uh, close their eyes. You have to mm -hmm. teach them to see. You know, I I it it freaks me out. You know, because my six year old she wants to watch Disney Channel. You know, if you guys uh, took a peek at that stuff, <laughs> it's like it's full of uh, sexual innu innuendo all day long. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like holy aimed cow. at the young young women. Yeah, it's like insane. It's seven, insane. Eight years it's old. insane. Yeah, and there's like I I think it looks like wait wait a second I want to watch this because <laughs> the girls got, are so hot. You know, it's like you got no, it's like okay, uh, jail just for my thoughts now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing on that, you know, if, well, if the person's really good and they maintain a style, I, I on the other hand, I, I should see, like, why, why shouldn't the artist get paid for his art if it's really good and he really maintains his style? Um, I, I, feel, I feel that way. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I think artists should not get, get paid for their art, per se, but just for m making uh, the art mm -hmm. you know what I mean uh, and it's not a thing that's for consumption right I, it's right. not a it's, you know what I mean it's, it, yeah. it's something that's bigger than that yeah well it's bigger than life well, right it life. it's it's uh, it's com it's about communication of ideas you know art is about protest and right you know and about changing things and uh, and about uh, changing perceptions you know i i hope with the making mu artistic music people will relate the, the the musical creation with the attitude in and political being of the of the artist mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it's because, uh, uh, especially when mm -hmm. there's no words, because and when you cannot say with words what your mm -hmm. what your message is, y and you wanna you wanna communicate with sound, so it's it's more open for interpretation, right? The the slow mm -hmm. syntax. Yeah. And, and high rhetoric. It's like you, you can say one million things with the uh, one sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, it, so uh, it's about stimulating the intellect and to make people 
more curious, more critical, more aware of uh, of uh, the imp input, the sen sensory input, because we can only output what comes in. We don't create anything. We we just transform what comes to us. Right. We have uh, physiologically very few outputs and we have our eyes which are input our ears are input mm -hmm. our mouth our nose our skin everything's input and then we still have to think about the spiritual side mm -hmm. of the in input mm -hmm. But how m how many outputs do we really have? So physiologically, we are much more input. So and then we process and transform, and eventually we let something good out. Most time, we, there's nothing good coming out. It's just it's going, you know, along with the time and the process. Mm. You input a lot of things, a lot of good things too. But time passes and passes and passes and nothing comes out, really. And then every once in a while we, we will let good things out. You know, and, and my hope is uh, with music and, and, and art, people can develop that capacity of output good things and processes, process the, the in things in a good way sensible way yeah because uh, all that processing is very much uh, um, ruled by our animal instincts and that's the fucked up part of it because we are animals yeah you know uh, the human beings are just human because we called ourselves human. We are still animals, and uh, and that's what really affects the processing of all the input, you know. So uh, art is a way to evolve away from the animal aspect of humanity. Amazing. Um, we, I mean, we can continue this conversation longer if you want, or we can, we can uh, wind down. There's no real timeline right now. Some, well, I forgot the poet, but what, what you just said is like to understand virtue, you have to understand violence. So, like the darker side could contribute to something. It's unfortunate, but it could maybe, maybe look, make you look at the other side, and maybe. It's a lesson. It, it, you can see where I'm we'll coming from. We'll only know in time, right? Those things we only know in time. When they happen. You know, it's a, there's no way to to foretell. You know? A lot of people try to foretell. Uh, and, and, and that's a way that a lot of people get manipulated too. You know, that's that's the basis of religion. Mm. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. That's the basis of religion and and, 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 and cause uh, for a lot of conflict, you know. Because just people are naturally they have the animal curiosity. Curio curiosity mm -hmm. and, and and they cannot answer that question. So they you know, people freak out, you know. They just yeah. cannot chill. <laughs> Do you hear your drone now? No. Can you hear it through the speakers? Because what what the audience has been uh, hearing this entire time is in a real trippy sound. It's slowly devolving into noise. Pure noise. It's becoming pure noise. <laughs> so so we like noise here, right? We like, Steve, noise. We like We like noise. So this is becoming nothing but noise. Your your drone. 
<laughs> hear that? That's what's left of the of the. Uh, hear that? It's still it's still hear good. It's still. Would you mind if I inputted something? Oh, I, I would not mind. Go ahead. Input I have something, something called noise. Oh really? Yeah, do it. Let's do it. We'll have it. It'll be a collaboration. All right. Collaboration between Steve Barada and um, Angelo Metz. All right. All right. Sounds cool. Are you ready? It's called noise. Noise, 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 noise. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies and ambient waves of noise. Let it flow across the prairie, across the open fields, the deserts, and into the cities. Let it flow out the open windows, onto the streets. Penetrate the night, penetrate the moon, the moonlit sky, and embrace the planets. Noise, 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 noise. Do you know where you are? Do you know where you've been? You're now in the moment, caught in a sound and a vision. Noise, 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 noise. Shock waves through transistors and oscillators and amplifiers. Free verse, freestyle, free form, call it what you want. But it's music and conceptual and poetry with no metering. Noise, 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 noise. Art, a reflection of your life. Life, a reflection of your art. The sounds of voices screaming through the airwaves. Right now, I'm sitting in a room, quietly absorbed, void of thoughts and inhibitions. Void of chaos. When chaos sorts itself out, a progression of peace and harmony coexists. Why can't we all coexist? We can, if we just stop to embrace the music and embrace each other.
two of At the Shows, 1967. 